sphingolipid mimic followed by glycosylation, then we can access this type of compound. We also try to, to modify the type of, so we try to use lipidic fat, uh, fatty acid and lipidic isocyanide with, only with uh, ethanol amine just to form these uh, fully synthetic compounds which are not derived from the natural uh, phytosphingosine, not phyto, but sphingosine, they are fully synthetic. And these are the key features of the, of the, compa of the approach that I would, uh, I would like to highlight. So we, uh, we went further and then we said, so what happens if we make some diversity oriented in this sense? So what happens, one of the key features of multi-component reactions is that you can vary the elements of the fragments that get incorporated. So we talk about the use of the uh, sphingosine, uh, initially glycosylated directly in the UG4 component reaction, and then we can generate two different uh, elements of diversity. And this is what we did. We incorporated amino acid, this cationic amino acid, because biochemists told us before that the presence of a uh, cationic uh, charge in the, in the membrane, they would help for the interaction with the phospholipid membrane and so on. So it is already reported that polycationic glycosphingolipids, they are more active in the immunostimulant activity than the natural ones. We also incorporated anionic uh, uh, moieties here or further aromatic compounds. So we can incorporate actually whatever we want because of multi-component just to put a carboxylic acid, and you can imagine how many commercial available carboxylic acid you find, and to take a primary amine to transform into a isocyanide, and then you can incorporate almost whatever you want. So this, is, this article is submitted to, in a paper of combinatorial chemistry because we really developed this concept. And later we said, so let's skip this glycosylation step. I have to tell you that this glycosylation step is not so easy. So it runs in 50, 60%, even with monosaccharides, even with highly activated uh, glycosyl uh, acceptors. Don't ask me why. So we focus on this three saccharide, which is present in a new family of uh, anti-cancer synthetic glycolipids that was described three or four years ago. This, with this ram nose unit, link it to the central glucose unit. And then we prepare, we use the UGI for the incorporation of these alkyne functionalities to use the traditional click chemistry approach that everybody was using. And then we skip the tedious glycosylation step just by preparing the glycosyl site, just by preparing the alkyne lipid tails, and then by using a click conjugation approach. So the ligation here is not multi-component, but it's a, it's a classical click ligation approach. But then we were capable to produce this type of compounds, which unfortunately were not as active as the original anti-cancer compound. So the, the approach really, it seems, it seems no. We found that the glycosidic linkage is crucial for this approach. So we said, can we skip this glycosylic linkage and can we incorporate everything in one step? So for doing that, we have to prepare the, this trisaccharidic unit already containing the amino and carboxy functionality. They were prepared from glucose by traditional sugar chemistry. And then we use these three saccharides with a lipidic, uh, the lipidic isocyanide and the fat acid for the incorporation in only one pot, only followed by the sugar deprotection. Although I have to tell you that you can also do it with the sugar with the free hydroxy groups, but it's better with the protected hydroxy groups. And then we prepare 12 examples with this longer chain, unsaturated fatty acid, a polyhydroxy fatty acid. So we prepare a different type of, of compounds and they are on, on the biological activity stage now, but the procedure was amazingly well accepted because actually it's the only procedure in which you assemble this type of compound, incorporating three different elements in only one step. The sugar, one of the lipid tails, and the other lipid tails. You only have to use paraformaldehyde. This is easy chemistry, it's done in methanol. Can be, you can be, I'm always saying that you can use ethanol. It can be run at room temperature with 90% of humidity like we have in Cuba. is chemistry that we can do in Cuba. And then we run to, to, to approach this type of compound. Also thinking retrosynthetically is a glycosylation step here. So we really said what happens if we, 
We had the aside enhanced by that time. What happened if we convert this trisaccharide with a, in a molecular fragment, a trisaccharidic fragment with an amine, and then we converted this steroid with an isocyanosteroid. So we can make the multi-component ligation approach just by using this compound. And this is what we did. We prepared analogs of these anti-carcin saponins. Some of them were active, some of them were not anti-cancer at all. So I have to thank the people in Spain who really measured the biological activity of these compounds. We only did the synthesis. But again, this is a very straightforward way to conjugate large molecule like this trisaccharide to a very bulky steroid by using a multi-component reaction. This is a special class of UGI four-component reaction, which is a reaction which, in which take part a dipolar cyclodition step in and in the, in the reaction mechanisms. So we also said, let's approach this type of molecule. So we will just look at the literature, everything we can apply our method, and we are doing that. This is what everybody does, no? We are trying to reproduce this type of compounds, because also in the institute in Germany, they work with proteins, and membrane proteins are very difficult to, to, to get soluble because you have to really take it out from the membrane, and then you use these amphipathic molecules. And the concept was the same. Let's convert this highly lipophilic esteroid. Well, this is not so lipophilic we, in the functionality with this esteroid. This is tedious chemistry, but it has to be done by chemists. Oxidation, oxide formation, reduction, formulation, dehydration is five step, but anyway, it's beautiful. And the preparation of this glycosyl amine from the corresponding glycosyl acide. This is easy chemistry by now for in, in, in our lab, also with the carboxylate. And then we use the multi-component concept. These guys, because these guys use a glycosylation. So they can incorporate only a disaccharide moiety in each step. We can incorporate two, because we are using a multi-component reaction. So we can use this isocyanide with a carboxylic acid and the amine. The yield is not spectacular, but take a look to the complexity that is being formed in only one step. Only a final deprotection on, in basic media, you can obtain this highly amphipathic molecule, this very amphipathic molecule with formation of A covalent bonds. And again, the concept is very, it's very beautiful. This is what I found, because we can do things that by traditional glycosylation chemistry cannot be done, just by using a multi-component reaction as the ligation approach. So we have many other examples. We also did it for, for peptides. I will not talk so much about this, but we prepare all these isocyanides in Cuba. We prepare the short peptides by chemical synthesis. Peptides are unique in the sense that they already have two of the functionality that take, that uh, get, that are required in the UG4 component reaction. So we have an amine and a carboxylic acid. You will see how many things we can do with peptides in a, in a minute. So we prepare, we did the same. So let's prepare this type of branch peptides, which are also unique, because by a traditional peptide coupling, if you couple this with this, you get only a secondary amine here. Because by the UGI, you have this dipeptide motif form in the UGI reaction, which is an unalkylated amide bond. So you have this type of branch peptide just joined to a highly lipophilic uh, molecule. And then you can deprotect this compound, and you can form a molecule with a hydrophobic uh, phase and with a polycationic phase for the interaction with membranes. We are always looking at application in biological chemistry, in medicinal chemistry, although the synthetic concept is new and you can synthesize uh, you can publish only with the concept, only with the synthetic concept. We were we get we got that interesting in cyclic peptides. So we introduced this cysteine here, which by further cyclization produced this type of amazing peptide. This compound is unique in the literature also. There are no example of this of these compounds in the literature, so it's, it was very well accepted. But then we about three years ago we turned completely to develop methods for the cyclization of peptide. We got really interested, interested in peptide chemistry and how to apply this multi-component reaction to the peptide chemistry because it was not done. And because you can do many things with peptide, there are many pharmaceuticals which are based on peptides. And especially people in that area are looking for peptidomimetics because peptides, they can be cleaved by proteases. They have different, uh, the pharmacological properties are not so well, so peptide mimetics are uh, even better. And in this case, we said, let's use this ligation method for the synthesis of this unique type of compound. So we prepare 
an steroid amine, and then with the use of a tetrapeptide, we conjugate it. Take a look always that we are forming two amide bonds in one reaction. So it's four covalent bonds formed. We increase, increase the length of a peptide from a tetrapeptide to an exapeptide in this case, okay? And then deprotection and cyclization, we get this type of peptide, steroid chimeras that we are calling in this sense. We did the same with the isocyanide. It's just converting the amine to the isocyanide. The ligation, take a look at the molecule, is different. Here, the steroid is complete, directly attached to the amine. And I have to tell you that this molecule, they have beta turns uh, structure. We found it now by NMR analysis. And this molecule is not, because then here you have like a spacer. So the isocyanide forms these amide bonds. And then the branch peptide gets uh, with a spacer in between with the steroids. But we can also access this type of steroid. And we did it in several positions of the steroid, in the side chain of the esterol at position 3, 12, 16, uh, uh, 17, at different positions. It's just to prepare the steroid among, among and to make the multi-component ligation approach. And then um, I want to show you now everything we did with with peptide, because when you take a look to a peptide, as I told you, you have the N terminus, the carbox, uh, the C terminus, and then you have also the amino acid glutamic and aspartic, which they have, uh, which have a carboxylic and also lysine, ornithines, they have this primary man. So you have four different types of cyclations. In the previous approach, we used the multi-component reaction only for the ligation, but not for the cyclation. The, cycl the cyclation was based on traditional uh, peptide couplings uh, reagents, okay? But here we said, can we use the UGI-4 component reaction to cyclize, and then we could obtain this type of compound with the N-alkylation, with these exocyclic functionalities here, and this R can be whatever we want. We try to this, uh, this approach for different, for three years, and I have to tell you, it's not so easy. So my student really took a lot of time to develop the cyclization of peptide based on the UGI reaction. This was a topic that I talked about in BIMOS, in, in, the last, in the last BIMOS. We immediately realized that many biologically active uh, naturally occurring peptides, they are not only cyclic, but they are also enalkylated. And these are the advantage of the enalkylation. So the, the cyclization is used by nature, especially for a exopeptidase stability, because you close the C and the N terminus, Though, so the exopeptidases have no end to start the cutting of the, of the peptides, but also the enalkylation increases the endopeptidase stability. So the, those proteases which cut in between the, uh, alongside the change, they can be also uh, inhibited. And these peptides are actually very uh, stable to proteolytic uh, degradation. In, in the, and they are produced by nature. So we said we can do both things in, in, in one shot. We can cyclize and enalkylate the peptides with our OG4 component reaction. And this is the concept. People have used also the, cycl the cyclization of side chains of this amino acid for the stabilization of secondary structure. So they use click chemistry, they use alkene uh, metathesis uh, reaction, they use the traditional lactam uh, coupling protocols, nature used the disulfide bridge, but nature also used this cyclation not only with the side chain to side chain, but with the N terminus to the glutamic side chains, also with the lysine, take a look that this is a lysine, with the C terminus of the peptide. These are all natural peptides, so all naturally occurring peptides which are cyclized. So nature actually used cyclization of peptides a lot. And then we start the study of the cyclization of peptide. This took a lot of time. We started, for, we started with the tripeptide, tetra, penta, and epsa. Tetrapeptides, they give mixture of the self-cyclized uh, compound and the dimer. Also, in different cases, so we have different examples. Of in the case of penta, exa, and epta, they don't, if you use pseudo-dilution conditions, so you have to really use highly diluted conditions for the, for the cyclization of this molecule, but then you get an acceptable yield. This is somehow the same yield that you use using peptide uh, coupling protocols. It's not, it's not better, but it's not worse, and this is good enough for us at that time. Because we have the additional feature that we alkylate our amide bonds at the same time that we cyclize. So we uh, shoot the two beards in one with only one shot. And then we found that the longer the peptide is, the, the higher is the reaction yield. 
and this is, although entropically, entropically, entropically you would think that it's different, actually for peptides is the way it is. Also for peptide coupling protocols, it's, it's the same. 